Hey there, everyone. A while back, I talked about this little battery bank setup that I put together over at the Survival Preppers YouTube channel. Uh, and I remembered that I hadn't done a full video on this. So I decided to do that over here uh, on this channel. Uh, what I did, uh, I want to explain first off, you know, why I put this together, what my plans are for the future and, and what all the different components are for this. Uh, but what I wanted to do is, for those of you that have watched this for a while, you know, a while back I did this this uh, rolling power bank, I suppose, DIY solar generator uh, that kind of stays outside. The solar panel has to stay outside, and then that little battery can go right inside the garage, which is right behind here. But I wanted something that I could put, that could live inside the house. Now, I can take this one inside the house and put it wherever I need to. But I wanted something that just kind of lived in here. So uh, I decided to go this route with this Life PO4 battery uh, and this little inverter. Now, I'll, I, I have plans on expanding this in the future, making this bigger. Right now, this is just a 20 amp hour battery with a 300 watt pure sine wave inverter. Uh, and I don't have it hooked up to solar yet. I plan on getting a charge controller uh, that is specific for Life PO4 batteries and hooking it up to one of my 15 different solar panels. So uh, that is in the plans for the future. That way, in a bug out situation for my ham radio, going camping, stuff like that, I am not dependent on this wall charger right here uh, to charge everything up in this battery. I can use that solar uh, during the day while I'm camping or, or just hanging out fishing or whatever, uh, and it'll charge this up. Now, with this, what this little setup will do right here, first off, I guess, let me show you on Amazon uh, what all of the, the four components that I bought were, uh, and then I'll explain what it will charge. Uh, on Amazon, the first thing I started off with was this Life PO4 battery. And the reason I like Life PO4 batteries than regular lithium ion, the big difference anyway, is that Life PO4 batteries have more cycles in them. So it's got a longer shelf life, longer lifespan, basically. So that it, there's a bunch of differences, but that is the main difference is, difference is that uh, it's going to last a lot longer. So on Amazon, this was, I just wanted a minimum viable product, basically. So what I did was, you know, kind of the smallest stuff I could. I'd got a 20 amp hour battery. Uh, this matey, I'm not sure about the uh, long-term quality of this battery. I am going to, I'll, I'll be testing this out and doing some stuff and I'll be doing a video later on if it uh, craps out on me, if it works pretty good. But the reviews uh, are really good uh, on Amazon. So I figured I'd give it a shot. The second one I got was, or the second part of this little setup I got was this Best Tech 300 watt pure sine wave inverter. The reason I got a pure sine wave inverter is because this will run small electronics, a laptop, uh, small TVs, things like that. So a pure sine wave, wave inverter is needed for those, elect those small electronics that don't like that alternating current sine wave. Uh, so I got one of these. They are a little bit more expensive, especially the more, you know, the higher wattage and all that. They get uh, pretty pricey, but they are better. Uh, and then I needed a connection here uh, to connect the battery with this inverter. And the quickest, easiest one, this was like 11 bucks, just a little cigarette lighter outlet. Uh, that way I can just plug that right in and, and we're good to go. And then because I don't have the charge controller yet, or have it hooked up to solar, I got this uh, this trickle charger uh, that is for lithium ion and for lead acid batteries. So I just click it to the lithium ion uh, side and then let that charge for a little while. Uh, actually, it takes about eight, nine hours. I, I drained it about 20, 30% at one point and it took about eight or nine hours. So it does take a while with this trickle charger, but there are other options as well. You can do that fast charging stuff. Or like I said, uh, my plans are to just have it hooked up to solar at any rate. So altogether, all of this stuff, uh, the $83 for the battery, you got 47 for the charger, uh, then the little battery adapter, and then the, or this is the charger, and then the, the inverter, $47. So about 150, 160 bucks. I don't know exactly what the math is right there. Uh, but for about 150, 170 bucks, I got all of this stuff that can basically be used inside the home. My plans for the future 
with this thing is to uh, make a little box or something for it. That way I can have, uh, I'm sure you could use a little plastic bin from Walmart or whatever you wanted to do, but I think I'm, I like doing the woodwork stuff, so I'm going to make a little box for it. So at any rate, let me go through uh, these little components here and how this is hooked up, and then I'll talk about what this is actually going to be able to do. So with these, like I said, I've got the 20 amp hour battery right here. And it just hooks up with these two connections right here, which go to um, this cigarette uh, outlet right here. And then this charge controller actually has the cigarette outlet right here. So it, it can't be, you know, it doesn't plug into the wall or anything like that, but it's got this directly on there. Uh, so it's it, that's pretty nice. Then it's got the two two outlets up front and then some USBs on the side. And then you can see if you turn this on, I don't know if you can hear that or not. It's pretty quiet, but it actually, uh, everything works fine. Now with this, like I said, I had to get this, this charger right here. And when you plug this in, you just click this button right here uh, and it switches from lead acid trickle charger to lithium ion. So, and these, you just, you know, pretty self-explanatory. You just hook those up to the battery. Now with this, when you, because it doesn't have a charge indicator or anything like that, what you need to do is use a, a voltmeter here. And if you just turn this on to uh, over to 20 volts, you can take this and I'll see if, make sure you guys can see this without the light glaring on it. Uh, you just hook the positive and the negative, and then you can see uh, it's reading 13.31 volts. Now, I'm sure there are chargers or, or little little electronics that you can get that will just read. You can hook it up there, and it'll read what the battery, the state of the battery is. But with this, I wanted to show if you're using the voltmeter, right here, that said 13.3. So that's telling me that I'm around 90% charged. Uh, between 70 and 90 when you're when it's hooked up to the charger it will read 14.4 volts uh, when it's just resting no charger hooked up or anything and it's a hundred percent it'll be 13.6 so you can see as that the voltage goes down that means your battery capacity is going down i believe this battery has a sleep mode where once it gets down to 10 percent, and i can't remember off the top or right now once it gets down to about 10%, it just won't work. So you need to hook it up to that battery, get it back up to that that point, uh, and then it will be fine. Uh, this pure, I already talked about the 300 watt pure, 100, pure sine wave inverter uh, for the small electronics and all that stuff. These are two things I plan on expanding in the future. Maybe getting uh, the, 100 lith the 100 amp hour battery, or maybe just getting a few of these and chaining them together. Uh, getting a larger wattage inverter here uh, to handle more stuff or, or you know, maybe larger TVs or, or desk, desktop computers, stuff like that. Uh, that. That is in the plans in the future. And also, I plan on getting a charge controller and all that stuff, like I mentioned earlier, uh, to make this solar compatible. Uh, so what I wanted to do is explain the things that this will charge and what my plans were for it. I had also thought about, uh, before I get into that, I'd also thought about with Starlink. We have Starlink internet here, and Starlink is Elon Musk's satellite internet, which is really good. And I was thinking about in some sort of SHTF situation, uh, would would it be viable to be able to run the internet uh, it, on a, a battery like this? That way, if the, the electric was out, would I still be able to get that? Now, granted, some situations you'd still have phones, so it wouldn't be an issue, but you just never know. Uh, with that, I did uh, a little bit of research, and it is possible, and I've actually tried it with this, and it does work. But with Starlink, uh, you need a 100 to 150 watt power inverter, which is, is fine. I've got that. Uh, it uses approximately 100 watts per hour, so that's 8.33 amp hours uh, that it that it uses. So with an inverter and the inefficiencies, you can expect that's probably around 10 or 11 amp hours, realistically. So running this 24 hours a day, having your internet hooked up on this would consume 240 milliamp or 240 amp hours. 
That's a lot of energy. Uh, that's a lot of energy that could be used for other things. So uh, what my final conclusion basically on this was is that, yes, it would work if it was an emergency situation. I needed to get on for 15, 20 minutes, check some things, l- gather some information, do stuff like that. It would work. Uh, camping, you know, things like that, it would work. Elon Musk is also coming out with a uh, RV type Starlink kit where you can travel around with it. So um, that is another option I'm looking at, maybe upgrading this, getting that bigger, getting it solar, making it solar, uh, and then ma- having that be a possibility as well. But for now, the things that I'm looking at are uh, the small electronics just around the house, just inside uh, that all the family members use. Maybe they could grab this once I make the box for it and and plug it in easy. Don't have to worry about lugging anything around. But a 19-inch TV uses about 3 amp hours, 35 watts. A laptop, it depends on the model and you know what, what kind of fancy stuff it has in it. But they use between 0.5 and 1.5 amp hours, uh, between 30 and 300 or 200 watts. Uh, like I said, depending on the model and what bells and whistles it has, is it a gaming computer? Is it just your straight, uh, you know, just basic model? Uh, a tablet uses one amp hour, 10 watts. A uh, 100 watt LED light bulb uses one amp, one, one amp hour and 10 watts. And just for a comparison, a uh, 100 watt incandescent bulb uses five hours and 60 watts. Uh, 50 watt ham radio, so this is your basic mobile rig, uh, uses about 4.2 amp hours. And these hook, you don't need the inverter, they hook directly up to that 12, point, 12 volt battery. Um, so, and th- that is something that I plan on utilizing this for in the future. So, there's a lot of different things that you, that even just this small 300 watt inverter with the 20 amp hour battery, battery will do. Uh, I tested this out a while back and In this video right here, I've got the light plugged into it. I've got a tablet plugged into it, and I've got my laptop plugged into it all at the same time. Uh, And I've also tested this with my ham radio. And everything worked perfect. I had this running for about 20 minutes, and I think it used about 15 to 20% of the battery. I can't remember exactly offhand. Uh, But it worked really well. So something like this in a power outage in an emergency is going to work. The problem with the setup the way it is right now is I need the grid to be able to charge it. So that's why the next step for me is getting that inverter, uh, that charge controller, I mean, that works with, that is specifically made for life PO4 batteries. I've got an MMTP, I think that's how you say it, outside, uh, your basic uh, low cost model. But I've read some conflicting things back and forth on whether that'll, sometimes they work with these, sometimes they don't, but it's not recommended. So what I'm going to do is just get one that's that's strictly for that Life PO4. Uh, and then I've got, you know, a, a number of different solar panels from a little 25-watt solar panel uh, to the, you know, even the bigger one outside that I could use uh, to charge this. And the charge controller for everyone, uh, just so they know, the charge controller is meant to stop. It's, it's a go-between between the solar panel and the battery. And it's meant to stop uh, that charge going into the battery once it's full. That way you don't overcharge it. So uh, before I get out of here, there's one thing I did want to mention, uh, which is kind of a uh, kind of a it, it, people. It's a challenge, I suppose. I'll put it that way. But when you're trying to figure out watts and amp hours on small electronics that don't, you know, specifically say it. You, you have to look at the label on the back, whether that's an appliance, your refrigerator, your laptop, your computer, your TV, whatever it is. But you can see up here, they've got the 19.5 volts. So my laptop supplies 19.5 volts at uh, 9.23 amps. So the wattage is that 19.5 volts times that 9.23 amps, and that equals 180 watts. So you take that 180 watts and divide it by 12 volts that's coming off of this battery, and it's 15 amp hours. Now, that seems like a lot, 15 amp hours, especially when I just said earlier that uh, a laptop uses 0.5 to 1.5. That is because that 0.5 to 1.5 is really low usage and your basic model laptop. My laptop, if I was using it at full power, uh, using a lot of the resources in it, and my laptop is a gaming laptop, so it's got a lot of processing power because I do videos and stuff. So it's going to use a lot more than that basic laptop. So that's why the discrepancy there. 
but that's it's a little bit more legwork to uh, or you can go to the manufacturer's website i mean there's probably a bunch of different ways but it's a little bit more legwork to figure that stuff out but it's really not that hard so at any rate, that's it for for this video. If I forgot anything, uh, leave a comment below. Let me know or if you have any questions. Uh, I'm going to have Kevin Ryder on with me in a little bit. Uh, we, he he knows a whole lot about all this stuff because he's putting his van together that's got solar power, battery power, and all, that, all the different stuff that he does. And he's uh, done a lot more research on all this stuff than I have. I've got this little $150 kit. He's got a lot more than that. So uh, if you do have any questions that I can't answer from Ed, from this video uh, in the in a future video, I'll, I'll forward them to him and we'll get those answered. But just a cool little kit, uh, something that is would be super convenient in a, in a power outage, something that's not going to break the bank. And also the fact that what I like about these DIY projects with batteries and stuff is they're expandable. You can build on these. You, you go out and buy a gener generator and you're getting what you get. Uh, if you want to expand the the watts from the inverter or the amp hours, you'll have to go buy another one. So with these, you can expand this yourself and uh, kind of kind of spend the money, you, you know, on a budget. Basically, you spend a, a couple hundred here and then a couple hundred there, rather than having to go uh, all out on on one big purchase. So. Uh, like I said, at any rate, if you have any comments, any questions, anything that I missed in this video, uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, but with that, we will talk to everyone later. Take care and prepare.